In this video, we will be talking about primality test and we are doing strong Fermat's test. So for the strong Fermat's test, let us uh, recall what is the Fermat's test first, which we also call it as Fermat's little theorem. So when I look at Fermat's theorem, this is based on if I want to say that n is prime or not, choose an integer a whose g to with n is equal to 1. Then Fermat's theorem says a raised to power n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n. So this is for prime but it is not necessary that if there is some integer which satisfy this condition then this n is a prime. So for example we did this example many times in my earlier video as well. We can take an example a is equal to 2 and then we can take n is equal to 341. So we notice that 2 to the power 340 this is congruent to 1 mod 341 which means we satisfy this type of the congruence but this does not imply that 341 is a prime. In fact, we call such integer pseudo primes. So now we are doing a little strong Fermat's test. So let us write the statement for strong Fermat test. So for the strong Fermat test, I will again choose an integer n greater than 1 and we consider n to be an odd integer. As we know that if we are checking that n to be a prime, the only prime is the integer 2. So all other primes are odd integer. So we consider n strictly greater than 1 an odd integer. And we can write n minus 1 which is now an even integer. This is equal to 2 to the power k into s where s is odd and k is greater than or equal to 1. We choose a base b. So choose an integer b such that its gcd with n is equal to 1. This test is very much similar which I have used for the factorization. In fact same there I called it as generalized Fermat test for factorization. Here in the conclusion we are trying to test towards the primality. Earlier in the factorization we used to test towards finding the factor. So that means in case we can find the corresponding factor for this n obviously this is not a prime. So towards the conclusion we will write a different version of the same test. Now once we have selected uh, integer b we and of course you can say that 1 uh, is strictly less than b strictly less than n we often select b as 2 or uh, because b can be even integer or we can select b as any other odd integer as well. We define random numbers like b0 congruent to b to the power s mod n b1 which is congruent to b0 square mod n and we continue doing like this we get bk which is congruent to bk minus 1 square mod n suppose n is prime so let n was prime then it is obvious that bk is congruent to 1 mod n we will see this step first in the proof so let us write here the proof we selected small b and n gcd as 1. So we can see as the gcd of b and n is equal to 1. So by standard Fermat's theorem only, we know that b raised to power n minus 1, this is congruent to 1 mod n. So this is already true. And let us call this as equation number 1. Now from the process that we have done here, we can notice that bk, this is congruent to bk minus 1 square mod n. This is the last congress that I have considered. This is how we are defining basically these congruences. And then this is congruent to bk minus 1 is same as bk minus 2 square. And then we have whole square. And we put back all the previous value. We see that this is congruent to b not 2 to the power k. And b not from the first congress this is same as b uh, to the power s. So that, which means 2 to the power k into s. Now b0 2 to the power k into s can be written as b 2 to the power k into s is same as n minus 1. This is from the construction. So this is b n minus 1. And from the first congruence this one this is congruent to 1 mod n. So this process allow us that for certain bk this is congruent to 1 mod n. And hence we have written that in the statement bk is congruent to 1 mod n. So now let j be such smallest index. Let j this be the smallest index which satisfy the above condition. So that means for some jth bj this is congruent to 1 mod n. 
सो इफ जे इज द स्मॉलेस्ट सच इंडेक्स ऑब्वियसली फॉर द प्रीवियस जे माइनस वन दिस विल नॉट बी कॉन्ग्रेन टू वन मॉड एन इनफैक्ट ऑल फॉर ऑल द प्रीवियस वन दिस विल नॉट बी कॉन्ग्रेन टू वन सो नाउ देर आर टू सिचुएशन इन दिस केस आइदर जे इज इक्वल टू जीरो और बी जे माइनस वन इज कॉन्ग्रेन टू माइनस वन मॉड एन सो देर आर टू पॉसिबिलिटीज फॉर दिस जे एंड देर फोर इफ डी के दिस इज नॉट कॉन्ग्रेन टू वन मॉड एन सो आइदर दिस इनिशियली बी के वॉज नॉट कॉन्ग्रेन टू वन और इफ बी जे माइनस वन इज नॉट कॉन्ग्रेन टू माइनस वन मॉड एन देन वी विल से दैट एन इज नॉट अ प्राइम दिस इज नॉट अ प्राइम एंड वाई दिस विल होल्ड वी कैन सी दिस अगेन इन द प्रूफ दिस स्टेप वाई दिस बी जे के माइनस वन इज कॉन्ग्रेन टू माइनस वन इफ आई एम गोइंग टू कंसिडर दैट एन इज प्राइम we we notice it in the generalized fermat's theorem so suppose the question is that we want to factor the integer n for the factorization generalized fermat theorem says that you find two integers which are related as x square congruent to y square mod n also they are satisfying this condition that x is not congruent to plus minus y mod n and in this uh, with this condition we find that the gcd of x minus y with n this gives us a non trivial factor of n this gives us a non trivial factor of n so now when this gives us a non trivial factor of n which is that means it is not 1 or n so similarly if i look at this step when we said that the bj is congruent to 1 and bj minus 1 is not congruent to 1 so from this small step as let us take bj is congruent to 1 mod n in the proof this means bj this is congruent to bj minus 1 square this is congruent to 1 because bj is congruent to 1 mod n so now one can be written as one square so here from these two from the last two it's like this is treated as x and this is treated as y and if at all this n is prime in this case i can rewrite this congruence as bj minus 1 minus 1 and then we can have bj minus 1 plus 1 congruent to 0 mod n so if this n is prime there are only two possibility either bj minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n one possibility is this and the another possibility is bj minus 1 is congruent to minus 1 mod n now the first possibility cannot be possible this is not done because we already said that the j is the smallest index so we cannot find a smaller in uh, further smaller index so this is not possible as bj is congruent to 1 mod n and here this j was the smallest index so the other possibility is there so bj minus 1 is congruent to minus 1 mod n so this is why we said that if n is prime for this condition we will always find that bj minus 1 is not congruent to 1 mod n or we'll see bj minus 1 is congruent to minus 1 mod n in case j is 0 then we cannot conclude something and the test remain as probable this is again not an exact test we'll still have to further investigate therefore there were two possibility either bk is not congruent to 1 or bj minus 1 is not congruent to minus 1 so if in these two cases we will conclude that n is not prime now let's take an example for this algorithm so in this case let's consider n is equal to 41 we want to test 41 is prime or not 41 is prime or not so this is the question so for 41 i'll choose a base b which is 2 and i'll notice that n minus 1 should be written in the format 2 to the power k into s now n minus 1 this is 40 this is equal to 2 to the power 3 into 5 so here s is 5 and now i'll have to take b not which is congruent to b to the power s mod n and then i find b1 which is congruent to b not square mod n and we keep on finding like this binary exponents till the time we do not get some k or some j which is congruent to 1 mod 
end and we have to select the smallest so maybe if i am just writing k we have to choose the smallest j such that this is congruent to one so this will imply the first b naught this is congruent to because i have selected b as two and s is five so this is two to the power five that is 32 mod 41 then I calculate B1 which is congruent to 32 square. So we square it and then we divide it by 41 and we write the least remainder here that is 40 mod 41. Then we calculate B2 which is congruent to 40 square. This is 800 and then we write the remainder here modulo 41. Now as you can see that B2 is congruent to 1. We can calculate one more or we can just simply stop here. B3 which is 1 square and we said that this is congruent to 1. So all the remaining expression are going to become as 1 because we have found this last expression is 1. Now bk is 1. Say for example this is k but we have to pick up the smallest index. So in this case as per my proof bj. So bj is b2 or the index j is 2 for which b2 is congruent to 1. So j minus 1 is 1 that is 2 minus 1 which is equal to 1 so I have to, I have to take the previous one so here I will have to simply check that bj minus 1 is congruent to minus 1 mod 41 if this condition is satisfied then it is a prime so bj minus 1 that is b1 which is congruent to 40 we can see from this one mod 41 and we see that 40 is congruent to minus 1 mod 41. So this satisfies the condition of the algorithm or the strong Fermat's test. So we can conclude that 41 is probable a prime. Probable prime. Why we call probable? Because in some of the cases this condition is not satisfied and if the value for j comes out to be 0 in some particular question then this test is not working. So that is why this probable test is probable word is attached here although we can conclude that 41 is a prime uh, if we further test that 41 do not have any factors so 41 is certainly a prime number now let us consider this example and here i will show that this test is not working if i take n is equal to 91 and i choose base b is equal to 3 then uh, we can write n minus 1 which is 90 in the exponent of 2 2 to the power 1 into 45 so we can see that s is 45 and the base is 3 so the first exponent that is b naught which is equal to base 3 upon 45 3 raised to power 45 so 3 raised to power 45 this is congruent to 27 mod 91 now then i have to calculate b1 which is congruent to b naught square mod 91 and this is congruent to 1 so because 27 square is congruent to 1 mod 91 now we see that b1 is 1 so here the value for j is equal to 1 so bj minus 1 that is b naught only and b naught is 27 and this is not congruent to minus 1 mod 91 so in case the previous j minus 1 is not congruent to 1 minus 1 we cannot conclude so we can say n is not prime so here we'll conclude that n is not prime so that is the test and this will uh, move to the second stage that this is not prime so we can try to find factorization for 91 so that is another associated question how to factor for 91 and then we see that 13 into 7 is 91 so 91 is not a prime it has factor so there are uh, other tests how to factor this integer so that can be seen in my other videos